today we'll be discussing contraband. We have a problem here at Phillips. We have a problem throughout the state with contraband. What we need is good officers. This is what I'm asking of you today. We need you to insert your energy. We need you to insert your knowledge into the staff that we already have. Sounds like a big challenge, but it's not. The one thing I need you to do is do your job. Doing your job is something that will propel other people to do their job. We have over 700 civilians have been arrested for trying to get contraband inside the institution. We have over 150 staff members that were certified to protect and serve the public have been arrested for trying to infiltrate contraband inside the institution. So when I say I need your help, I truly do need your help. And with your help, if we can slow it down and eventually stop it. We have, right now, we have officers being arrested right now. We have ex-wardens who are selling cell phones to inmates. He only had to deal with less than 100 inmates, and he took it upon himself to sell. He was making over $100,000 a year from the state. A check that he was receiving just for doing his job, and I guess that wasn't enough for him. So he started selling cell phones to the inmates. It's, it's mind-boggling that somebody would go to that extent to just make a little bit of money on the side. He was selling iPhones. He was selling flip phones. But he was selling them and he was making $100 to $500 a cell phone. And he, and he was doing it. One day another, one of our contraband they tried to get in is tobacco. They, they bring them in, it's non-detectable, metal detectors can't detect it, and they get them into the inmates. Right now, a new port pack of cigarettes with 20 singles in it costs about $60. And that is mind-boggling because that's more expensive than cocaine, weed, or meth that's, that comes inside the institution. So when I say I need your help, I need your help. I need you to do your job. When you when you become in uniform and you come back from the academy, and it's a short academy, come back with a purpose. Not saying, oh, you know what, I got me a job now. I don't have to do much of anything. Come back that you want to make a difference. And it sounds like it's a cliche, but you having that in your heart and you ready to put service before self, that you're ready to do your job before you worry about personal gain, that makes a difference. Contraband is growing. Right now it's just weed and drugs and cell phones and tobacco, but we're finding that they're throwing over knives, real knives. And we know if they're bold enough to throw over knives, they're going to throw over a weapon, a gun. Has it ever happened before? I'm sure. Has it ever happened in, in our state? Not positive, but it's, it's possible. We have record that it did happen. That they did try to shoot themselves out of one institution before. So it's, it's there. We don't have any statistics saying that when they're going to do it, or, but we know why they're going to do it. They want to do it because they want to be free. If we're doing our job with basically the basic and beyond just by pat searching inmates and searching their cells and doing what we're supposed to do and leaning on our supervisors and not leaning on each other when it comes to complaint. When, it, when you want to complain about something, don't complain to each other. Complain up. Let the problem go up so it can reach the top so somebody can do something about it. If you complain to each other, it brings the morale down. You start questioning why you're in uniform. You you start questioning the vision and the mission of why you're here. Can't nobody take care of your family better than you. Nobody. Not me. Nobody besides you. Nobody. But if you're doing your job and you walk out the same way you walked in, 
you got a better chance to take care of your family than anybody. So you look at why you do it. Find out the purpose of why you were in law enforcement. Most people are in law enforcement because they have that passion for the job. And if you ever break down the word passion, you're passing it on to somebody else. Don't hold it on to yourself. Pass it on to the next person who needs that knowledge, who needs that spark. Because you might know something that a veteran that has been working here for 20 years don't see. And they'll see your energy like, you know what, though? It's time for a change. Maybe I need to remember why I started working in corrections, why I'm in law enforcement, why I need to stop the contraband from entering the institution. Because the contraband that you look the other way on, somebody might, it might cost somebody their life. You never have to deal with a convict that's high on a drug, and it's these synthetic drugs that they're getting now is giving them superhuman strength. They're, they, we have, they had incidents out in the free world that it, it, they were eating each other. And when they shot them, they had to shoot them multiple times to put them down. And I don't know if you remember the, the incident when the, uh, the man just ate half of the man's face off. And when they tried to shoot him, they shot him about 15 times, and he still was coming. So it's out there. And it was just a synthetic PCP. We all must pull together. We all must understand that doing our job is important. That following the mission is important. Following the standard operation procedures is important. And why we do what we do. We, we get a lot of downtime. But when we're ready to be proactive and react to stuff, we need to be on point. We don't need to be behind the eight ball wondering what we should have did when we could have did something last week or a month ago. We don't need to try to understand, and I wish I was second guessing ourselves, being that Monday quarterback saying what I should have did after we see a fellow comrade laying on the floor bleeding out their brain wondering what we could have did to save their life. How we could have prevent that gun or that shank or that drug getting inside the institution. What could I do different? So when you're going to run into seeing a fellow officer do something that violates the policy and procedures, I'm not telling you to be a snitch. No. I'm telling you to tell them. Let somebody know. Because that could be you on that floor that's wondering what happened. Who didn't have my back? What could I could have did different? How could I save my own life? All we need to do is help understand why people deal with inmates and why they try to bring in contraband. The one thing I can tell you is, if this is the first time an inmate told you you was cool, you were never cool. And if this is the first time somebody told you that you look good, <laughs> you never look good. You was always a lame, you was always ugly. If this is the first time somebody had to tell you that. Everybody in here that come here is grown, grown people, grown men, grown women. So if their self-esteem is that low that they need somebody to talk to and they got to be an inmate and then you start com compromising your job and feeling sympathetic to these inmates, then you run the why. You're in the predicament of being polygraphed and wonder why somebody escorting you out or wonder why your family picking you up from jail because you done got locked up for an inmate deal. And it ain't always got to be about contraband because from bringing in a cell phone right now, you get one to three years federal time. Dealing with the inmate sexually gets you up, up to 30 years. Up to 30 years you can do for dealing with the inmate. And there ain't no such thing as consensual sex when they're dealing with inmates. You they supervisor. You got them under arms. Ain't nothing you can nothing you can say to any judge that's gonna say, okay, I understand you was in love with. Them. And you're gonna have that. You're gonna have them falling in love, officers falling in love, inmates falling in love. Love don't pay no rent. So if you're doing your job, Ain't nobody can say 
really nothing to you. But when you start trying to relate to these inmates, that's when the problem, that's when it's going to occur. Help your supervisor. When you see a supervisor not doing what they're supposed to do, tell them, hey, look, we can't do it like that. That's why not, that's why I'm not here for that. We can't do it like that. That violates this inmate rights and that put me, that compromises in my position. Morally, we can't do that. We got the right to use force. We don't got the right to be a bully. That's not our job. We're supposed to abide by the laws of the state, of the feds, but we got to abide by the laws that's what here. That's going to make the difference. That's going to make the officer that you're going to be. If you decide that you're going to run towards the situation or away from the situation, that's the only two type of officers that they are. There ain't no other two. There ain't no other. There ain't no third. And you can't halfway help nobody. You're going to make that decision yourself. You're going to decide what type of officer you're going to be. But leaders are not born. You become a leader. But to become a leader, you've got to follow something. And if you follow the things that's right, then you're going to be all right. But you got to always ask yourself, what's the difference from doing what's right and doing the right thing? Think about that as you lead today. What's the difference between doing what's right and doing the right thing? It's a big difference. But that's what you got to ask yourself. Why am I here? If the seven of y'all was to help seven people change their ways, that would make a difference. If each one of y'all help seven people. That's 49 people. And if those 49 people help seven more people, that's 363 people. That's an amazing number of how, how it can change. That's, that's all the security. That's every security person. And if we could change everybody here, that would make all the difference. Would nobody want to come here? Everybody want to transfer. But that's how we got to look at it. We got to start out with a small number and then see if we can get it to affect other people, help it to change the way other people think. Gandhi once said, if you want to see the world change, then you need to change.